Hello community, today we'll be diving into the subject of featured contracts. What are they? What rewards do they give you? And most importantly, are those rewards worth grinding or not? First of all, featured contracts are basically fan-created contracts on already existing NPCs on Hitman maps. Unlike Freelancer, the maps are completely unchanged, meaning that all of your desired tools and weapons are exactly where they usually are on your main playthrough. Furthermore, featured contracts usually will have some sort of an optional objective, like don't change disguises or don't pacify anyone, etc. As the name suggests, however, those are optional objectives. And you can't complete the contract, even if they are failed, you will still get the check mark for that contract, meaning it still counts towards your reward progression. The featured contracts are split into two sections, two categories, if you will. The ones that take place on Hitman 1 and 2 maps, and the ones that take place on Hitman 3 maps. Depending on which locations you choose to play will depend the reward you're gonna get from them. In 2023, there's no shortages of featured contracts to choose between. You can play only the ones you like, and you will still be able to get all of the rewards and then some. That being said, we have to look into those rewards. Are they worth getting? Well, let's jump in and find out. And we're gonna start with the featured contracts, Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 maps. For 5 featured contracts, the very first reward is the gold coin. So, is this reward worth it? Honestly, yes, it is a risk-in, yes, it's not a super important thing, but for 5 featured contracts, in my opinion, this is just good enough. It is an interesting coin, it is a different thing, there's not th that many coins available unless uh, you switch from Hitman 2 to Hitman 3 and you took all the coins from that game. Uh, there's actually not that many coin skins necessarily. So I think for 5 featured contract this is something new, this is something different. Also it makes sense to throw a gold coin. If you do like the way it looks, if you do like the style, then uh, definitely in my opinion it is worth getting. From there we're gonna move to the measuring tape. This is basically just a fiber wire reskin, and again, it's gonna be Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 maps, you're gonna need to do 10 featured contracts this time. And uh, for me personally, is this thing worth it? Mm, yes and no. I never really use it myself, but if you like it, if you find it cool, you can definitely take it. Uh, it doesn't really make a big difference, as I said, it's just a reskin, it's not important. But at the same time, for such a low featured contracts number, you're sort of gonna have to grind your way through it anyways, so you're gonna have to have it. Uh, on 15 featured contracts, you're gonna have the Red Tie QE, this already made its way on my worst unlocks list. And yeah, I remember a bunch of people said, oh, but you can destroy two people at once. It's like, dude, it gets destroyed as soon as you use it. And it's just, it's not fucking useful. Unless you're some speedrunner that is just has this super specific strategy. I can't, I think 99.9% .9 of Hitman players will never, ever, 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 ever need to use uh, this item. It's just not optimal for anything i mean unless again a very very specific thing because uh, some people say oh but but my friend he did a speed run on this contract and he used the red tie q before it so basically it's the best weapon in the game and it's like just because your friend used it in a custom made contract one time and it was useful does not mean that this is a good gadget genius it's not good it's not optimal most people won't need it most people won't use it it's not good legitimately but anyways moving past it we're onto the handyman wrench. And this is something that is good, but it's also very niche. So for certain targets, it's good. I think for elusive targets specifically, uh, for example, the one in the Isle of Scale, when you have to steal the book, you can sabotage, where there's basically smoker elusive targets, or the lamp for the politician in Hogs Bay. Again, the handyman wrench can be very useful. But at the same time, you know, there are wrenches on maps, so is it extremely useful? Is it, you know, something that you cannot play without? Not really. This is gonna make things easier, but it's not a lifesaver by any means. It's not something you have to have, but it definitely will make your life a little bit easier. Next up is the Arcan Tuxedo. Uh, it doesn't have the gloves, even though you're seeing it with gloves because I've modded it. Uh, but in reality, this is a cool suit. This is a very, very, very unique suit. Uh, there's nothing quite like it. I think it's a reskin of an Iowa's Gale Guard, but anyways, it is unique when it comes to, you know, your own personal suit anyways. And in my opinion, it does look really cool. I think it's very interesting, it's very, uh, you know, especially for Isles Gale, or for some types of maps, you know, taking place at night, some sort of official event, maybe even Paris. Uh, it can be interesting, Mendoza as well, in my opinion, could be a very interesting suit. So yeah, overall, in my opinion, it is worth getting 25 featured contracts, you know, it is a bit, but again, this is a brand new suit, so in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. 
Uh, 30 featured contracts will get you a hobby knife. Hobby knife, in my particular uh, opinion, not the most useful thing. It's just a reskin of a knife, and knives aren't useful, so the hobby knife isn't exactly more useful anyways. Um, outside of it being maybe unique looking, it has no real benefits gameplay-wise that I've noticed, so I cannot recommend the hobby knife over any of the other knives or anything else. It's just, again, it's reskin, and knives in general in this game have never been optimal. 35 featured contract will get you the phantom suit, again pay no attention to the gloves. Uh, the phantom suit is a very very unique looking suit, it's also a suit that, you know, 35 featured contracts, not a lot of people are gonna have it. It's not the best looking when you have the driving gloves on, but if you are able to mod it, it does look a hell of a lot better. And overall, in my opinion, phantom suit definitely suit worth getting, it is very very interesting looking, very different from anything we've had before, even though, yeah, of course it's a risk and everything is when it comes to suits for the most part, but uh, still, in my opinion, this is a worthy suit. Next up we have the toolbox for 40 featured contracts, and the toolbox it's a reskin of a briefcase. Is it something you need to have? Absolutely not, there's so many briefcases in the game already. Uh, 40 featured contracts in my opinion definitely means it's not worth it, at least to me. You can get it if you want to, if you like the design, but if you asked me how far should I go when it comes to featured contracts, I would say 35 for Hitman 1 and 2 maps. I think at 40 you are sort of not really getting a good return on your investment. And at 45 the blue flamingo suit, I mean honestly, unless you have the sense of humor of a Fortnite player, I don't think this suit is worth getting, at least in my opinion. Of course, everybody has their own style, everybody has their own idea of what looks good and doesn't, but uh, the Blue Flamingo suit, at least for me, it's not anything to lose your mind over, at least for me, but yeah, if you like it, you can push to 45 featured contracts, but at least for me, 35 I think is where most people should probably uh, cut it, because at that point you're sort of getting the best of the best, but at the same time, if you're pushing forward all the way to 45, you're not really getting the best returns. Again, that that will depend entirely however also on your personal style your personal view and you know if you want to do it do it but this is just my personal take on it and from there we're gonna move on to the hitman 3 uh, featured contracts and we're gonna start with the breaching charge mk3 now of course when something has mk3 in the name it's very obvious that there's more than just one the original breaching charge will be available at level 15 in sapienza Five featured contracts definitely is a lot easier and a lot faster to do than achieving level 15 in Sapienza. So overall, this is worth it. Uh, it is, it's basically a reskin of the breaching charge. It's exactly the same. They're both exactly the same. Even though one says it's remote, I promise you, they are exactly the same. There's no differences whatsoever between the breaching charges. Uh, but it is a very good unlock. You can get through. Uh, any type of maybe uh, areas where there's uh, debris or rocks and you need to blow them up to get in. There's not as many anymore, it was a Hitman 1 thing more than anything else, but still it is useful. And also having an explosive that is silent for any type of uh, featured contracts or escalations where you're gonna need those silent explosions, I think this is absolutely an item that you must have. So yeah, this is my opinion, a very very good item. At 10 featured contracts, we're gonna end up at the ICA Tactical Shotgun Covert. Now, this is a reskin of the white uh, shotgun covert, which uh, you get from Carpathian Mountains for achieving uh, level 5, I believe. However, uh, here's the thing this shotgun has 14 bullets. In comparison, the NRAM HV Covert has 30 bullets. Uh, the damage is about the same, however, the NRAM has much tighter aim and the, it, it's sort of better in damage because the tighter the aim is it's easier to kill people from long range however the tactical shotgun when you shoot someone with it they will go down with the end round they'll stay back up and they'll try shooting at you so this is better in some ways for certain things while the end round is better for others the end round has more bullets it has tighter uh, aim so it's better in that sense but at the same time, the tactical shotgun covert will take people down a lot uh, more, meaning that when you shoot somebody, they go down, they're not gonna shoot at you back right away, which sadly is the case with the NROM. So it very much is a plus and minus. Overall, I still think the NROM's better. The tighter aim and more bullets, it's just, in my opinion, much better. However, it's not a bad shotgun. It's second best, if nothing else. And for 10 featured contracts, I think it's worth it. For 20 featured contracts, you're gonna get the remote, uh, demo block mk3 again mk3 there's mk2 there's also the original uh the original i believe is from colorado i believe it's level 20 there 
So again, when it comes to this particular item, I don't think there's anything good about it. You can also get it level 13 in Wilton Creek for the MK2 version, but this is not a good item. This is a very loud explosive. There's nothing good about it. It's illegal to hold, at least for like a breaching charge. You know, the explosive is silent, you know what I mean? So it's like you can get away with uh, using an explosive and for the rubber ducks, they're not illegal to hold. This is sort of the worst of both worlds. It's a worthless item. So, I mean, do I recommend you getting this item? Absolutely not. You're gonna have to if you want to get to the next parts when it comes to featured contracts. But in my opinion, this is not a decent item. Not even decent. It's, it's straight up bad. 30 featured contract will get you a very good looking Secret 300 sniper case. This is a very, very unique uh, sniper case for the Secret 300 sniper. In my opinion, very good looking, very unique also in the way that it's styled, the way it's created. This is a very much uh, not a reskin, but it's a very original creation. I'm a big fan of this uh, sniper case. I think it looks beautiful. I think it's very, very well made. And again, 30 featured contracts, a bit of an ask, but at the same time, for this sexy of a briefcase, I think it may just be worth it. Next up, we have the ICA-19 FA Stealth Ducky Edition, and this can be a great pistol, but it is a reskin. Uh, the original pistol is level 10 in Colorado, which in my opinion is way easier to get level 10 in Colorado than 40 featured contracts, which makes it not worth it, but technically it is a good pistol if you're able to use it correctly, meaning that if you have a sensitive controller or mouse and you're able to touch the trigger very lightly and you're able to only shoot one shot where you need to, this is a great pistol. You can uh, go straight through doors, you shoot the lock, the door blows wide open, lock doors. So this is very, very useful. You don't need a lockpick most of the time when you have this particular pistol. It's fantastic. You're able to shoot uh, multiple bullets at the same time, so kills are easier to get. There's a bigger chance to get them. Uh, you know, it's much easier. Also, for explosions, if you want to blow up a propane flask or if you want to blow up something, it's going to be easier because you're shooting multiple shots at the same time. However, when it comes to bullet distractions, you're gonna need to find a way to shoot a single bullet instead of two, and that is not easy to do. You're gonna have to find uh, some sort of sensitivity when it comes to your trigger and being able to do that. You're gonna have to either with your mouse or with your controller be very sensitive on the touch of the trigger if you wanna do bullet distractions. It can be a little bit difficult to do that. So again, if you are able to do that, I would say it's probably the best pistol in the game outside of maybe the Seeker. However, if you're not able to do that, you may struggle here and there when it comes to its uh, reliability, honestly, because it's going to be kind of limited in use. You're going to have some really strong uh, things to it, but also some real weaknesses when it comes to any type of bullet destructions. Of course, if you don't do bullet destructions, maybe it's not that bad. But if you do, then, you know, as again, as long as you're sensitive, you're going to be able to somewhat uh, deal with it. But the automatic part of it uh, can be a bit difficult for certain situations. Moving from there to the SMG Raptor uh, Ruby Covert. This is a reskin, of course, of the Ruby Covert, which I believe level 15 in Chongqing is the original. Overall, uh, again, for 50 featured contracts, it's a very steep ask, and I don't think it's worth it. I think it's easier to get it from Chongqing, but more than anything else, the SMG Raptor Ruby, unless you're doing a shootout, unless you're doing a kill everyone challenge, it's gonna be very difficult to choose this item better than the Duck X to cover because the Duck X to cover is so much better when it comes to just being able to hide it on yourself. Uh, it's uh, gonna be a lot more sort of reliable when it comes to that. You don't need a briefcase. And that's a big thing. I mean, having to carry a briefcase for this covert. I mean, okay, it has a lot more bullets. It's a lot more accurate. It's a lot better of a weapon, but at the same time, you know, why do you need it for everyday hitmen? Unless you're doing some very specific kill everyone challenges, I don't think this weapon is necessarily that useful. Outside of that, we go to 60 featured contracts for the Hakko Sniper Rifle Covert Ducky Edition. Of course, this is a reskin of level 20 Chong Ink uh, Sniper Hakko. However, at the same time, the Hakko is not the best sniper in the game. The Ghost definitely beats it in most categories. 20 bullets for the Hakko, 24 for the Ghost, but the Ghost has much better fire rate. I think the fire rate of the Ghost is, you can see it, I mean, on screen, the Ghost uh, has much, much stronger fire rate. And also at the same time, the Ghost is going to not uh, shoot penetrating rounds, 
meaning that you're not gonna have any problems with uh, causing unnecessary bullet distractions because when you shoot a hacker rifle what's gonna happen a lot of times you're gonna shoot somebody and then the bullet's gonna go through them and it's gonna hit a wall or a door or something like that and it's gonna cause a bullet destruction if anybody sees or hear it so you know that can cause you some issues and some problems so overall, I would say the Ghost is better, and in my opinion, for 60 featured contracts, it's way too much to ask. And finally, 70 featured contracts, the very last one, we have the Screwdriver. You know, on paper, this is a very strong item, but in reality, it really isn't that strong, because most of the time, you can use a pistol instead of a Screwdriver, but even when you need a Screwdriver, you can always find a Screwdriver on the map, unless you're doing a very specific type of contract or escalation. It's very, very, very rare that a Screwdriver, a professional Screwdriver, is gonna be a need to item. This is an item that, in my opinion, would have been nice to have if it was a little bit easier to get, but the thing is, I've had this item for over a year now, and I can't remember ever using it for anything. I mean, I might have used it once or twice maximum. So overall, this just goes to show you, like, this is, on paper, maybe a strong item, but in reality, you're gonna have to go out of your way to find a use for it, which, in my opinion, just isn't worth it. And overall, when it comes to the featured contracts, I would say that for Hitman 1 and 2, 35 is basically the sweet spot. After that, you will start to maybe not get as good of a reward for this struggle. And when it comes to Hitman uh, 3, I would sort of cut it at 30 featured contracts. I think after that you're only getting reskins and item that isn't all that optimal for the most part. I think at 30 featured contracts, that's where you're gonna get your maximum worth out of it. I think after that you're just getting reskin, 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 and then a screwdriver, which, as I said earlier, is not the most useful, not the most optimal. Very, very rare to find anything to really. Uh, do with it because even for missions where you're gonna need a screwdriver you can always get one unless you're doing some sort of a speed run where you have to have a, a screwdriver on you immediately this is just not a word you unlock but with that we've gone through the featured contract and uh, that's basically my opinions you can let me know what you think in the comments below uh, how far have you gotten through those featured contracts and will you go any farther are you gonna unlock all of these items do you have them do you think it's worth it let me know in the comments below thank you very much for watching drop a like if you enjoyed subscribe for more content and i will see you guys in the next one